Hi there, DW Berman here. This week we are looking at the scene editor in Lightwave 9.6. It was called the just the scene editor, open, and you had the classic scene editor. You open, and then you had new instance, and there we have two versions of it. But we're on Lightwave 11 now, and they changed the name to scene slash dope editor, and the regular scene editor here is actually the classic scene editor, because a lot of people still like the classic editor, because it's a lot simpler and easier to manage in some ways. But uh, I thought I'd go over some of the features of the scene slash dope editor that are particularly handy, I think. Um, for one thing, there are two modes to this. Well, there are a couple panels here. We have the item panel over here, and then we have the uh, dope sheet over here, or the property panel over here on the right. So depending on what you have the set, at which tab you have selected here, the the actions are completely different. If it's in the dope sheet mode, you see all your keyframes, in which case I don't have many in this this uh, scene because nothing really moves. You can select the keyframes and move them around. You can drag a box around them and stretch them out, scale them out. Um, I will note that whenever you do that, you want to right click on it and uh, go to Selection and Quantize. Now in the older versions of Lightwave, these aren't necessarily divided out into these separate, separate subsections. It's just a one long menu, but they've uh, not exactly streamlined it, but they've organized it better in Lightwave 11. Thanks, Matt. So uh, Quantize, and that will make sure you don't have any keyframe or any keys between keyframes. It'll clean up any fractional keyframes. Um, this is basically a spreadsheet kind of a thing, so if you want to select all the keys on one particular frame, you just click in the top row above the, uh, the actual rows and cells, and you can select the entire row. If you click over here on the left, you can select the entire, all the keys in that row. Sorry, I said columns are vertical and rows are horizontal. There you go. So... Yeah, click over here on the side to select all the keys in the row. And if you want to select all the keys together, click in this upper corner here. And I think I just discovered all that by accident one day, but that's how that all works. Um, again, you have lots of different options in here. And uh, the difference between there's an erase and a delete. And uh, let me see, if I select some keys in here and I hit see delete you'll see my keyframe at the end jumps down so this is like a ripple delete whereas erase will just erase the keyframes um, that's pretty much all I'm gonna say on the dope sheet uh, here we have sorry this is disorganized but over here on the, the left in this panel here we have a find thing so we can narrow down the items that are showing up here um, we also have a ton of lights in this scene and say I want to change all of these light colors I don't want to go through each individual light color and change them I can do that all here by just kinda clicking and dragging in this little space over to the left of the the field of the entry and that will bring up my box up here um, I pretty much just ignore this box most of the time because you can just make your changes right here in line in the row and just uh, it'll change everything that's selected um, yeah that's how that works if it's a toggle value let's say I go to light flags I can you know turn caustics off for all of them you can also use the uh, check and uncheck buttons up here then you have to hit apply there's also a toggle, so you can just change the state to the opposite of whatever it is, which could be useful if you have something like this, where you have volumetric on for one but not the other, and you just want to toggle them. Um, you can also preview what that would look like, but that can get confusing. So, yeah, there's that's how you manipulate values in MOS for all of these things at once. Uh, if you shift click, I believe, yeah, it'll highlight everything. And if you go across columns, it'll highlight things. I'm holding down shift now, so. 
So that's something you can do. Um, and this works for not just lights, but also objects. Uh, you can change the color of items in your scene by right, or rather left clicking directly on the little icon. So you can change the color of the how it shows up in your previews. And uh, over here we have active, visible uh, columns. If this does not have a checkbox in the A column, that means it is not showing in the render. Let's see if I can see which light this is I'm turning off. Probably not. So let me just select a bunch. These are the red lights. Let's turn off the volumetric lights. They'll be more visible. Okay see these lights in the top up here are turning on and off. This is because I'm deactivating them. If I switch over to my regular wireframe view or OpenGL view, you can see which lights I have selected. They're at the top. Let me zoom in on them. If I click this little dot here, these, the OpenGL preview of these disappear. Let me turn that off. So. Or, well, you don't see that because they're highlighted, so there you go. And uh, something I should point out is the selection between what's in the viewport over here and what is selected over in the scene editor is not the same. So you can uh, select something in here that's not necessarily going to highlight over in the scene editor. But you can come over here and right click in this window and just do selection, select or highlight viewport selection and that'll highlight things what's selected this will highlight the item that is selected in the viewport um, something that I usually end up doing uh, by accident is I want to change something over here in the right panel I'll just select everything over here in the left panel that I want um, I might even take a little bit of time making a careful selection and realize that really the things I need to have selected are these fields over here on the side so all of my previous selecting over here in the left panel has been uh, useless and a wasted effort. So um, you can sort what's in these panels, like in, uh, in most file systems, you can sort by clicking on the, the piece on the name at the top of the column. So right now I'm selecting by item, or it's sorting by item name, uh, ascending or descending and I click it again and it sorts the other way if I click it again it'll sort by item sequence which is I believe the item number you know when was this item loaded or created in the scene and the item ID number what is the ID number of this item in the scene which you generally don't think about unless you're doing some pretty detailed stuff so I'm not sure exactly what the difference between ID and sequence is, other than you know they're just something to do with how the items are added in the scene, and that can be very helpful at times when you're trying to find something, uh, because this list can get large and unmanageable. You'll notice that there's a uh, blue icon over here. If you click this, it'll get rid of all of the hierarchy, so you see everything in the scene at one time. You can hide things. I guess it's hiding everything but the things I had selected and unhide. So uh, yeah, lots of stuff you can do. This over here, this column, column with the lock on it is to lock things. Uh, the column with the plus on is to open the channels so you can go to your dope sheet and edit specific channels. Like if you only want to change the keyframes on the uh, heading, you can do that there fills up the view pretty quickly I think. Um, also under the eyeball I showed you how the lights have this little dot to turn it on and off. Uh, we also have these other things for objects. It looks like a TW and that is a texture with wireframe. Uh, we also have texture solid and shaded solid and wireframe solid. So you notice these uh, circles here are not filled anymore when I switched it to wireframe. On shaded solid they're filled in, on wireframe they're not. 
And if I switch the vertices, I don't know if you'll see a difference. Oh, wrong object. Yeah, there you can see the dots that make up the circle and bounding box, or hidden you won't see anything. Bounding box, you'll just see the overall shape of the object. So pretty basic stuff there. It corresponds with the viewport up here, except you have individual item control. Uh, one last thing I want to point out, and again, there's there's more to show you in this, but I don't want to go on forever. Um, you can have more than one of these open, which can be handy at times. And occasionally you might have a, a situation where something goes a little haywire and you open a scene up and every time you open a scene up you get two or three of these windows popping up and it can be annoying because you don't want them to pop up when you first load the scene. Um, especially if it's a duplicate one that you don't need at all. Uh, the way to get rid of that is to go to the Utilities tab down under Master Plugins you notice you get a window up and it says scene editor 1 and scene editor 2 we can just right click and remove and that will remove our extra scene editor windows uh, this also works to get rid of the open you know the render queue uh, render queue is something completely separate but this lets you render your scenes offline you can add scenes to render and uh, make a whole list and it'll just go through and load and render each one the trick with it is you either have to go to the master plugins to remove it or click the close render queue button because just closing that there it won't actually close it it'll whenever you open the scene up again it'll still be there and you see it's still in our master plugin so if you use uh, render queue make sure you use close render queue so that's a completely different subject so yeah Lightwave new scene editor. So, well, it's not that new anymore, but yeah, just a few things you can do with it and uh, how to work with it. And again, a lot of people don't even bother with it, but you might find a use for it. I like changing settings to lots of objects and things with it. So there you go. Another video, another week. Have a great one. Uh, subscribe to the channel so you can catch these little tips videos whenever I post them or I'm Hopefully we'll have a demo reel out soon. And um, check out the videos, the full-length tutorials, nicely edited and everything, over at uh, liberty3d.com. And I'll talk to you later.